All right. Hi, trendsetters. Welcome back to Read Aloud, Stella by Starlight. Um, so today we're going to be reading only two chapters because they're a little long today. Um, the first one we'll be looking at is the two puncture wounds. And then the next one, chapter 43, will be white patients only. So if we remember back to what we read last time in our Read Aloud Stella got to spend some time with Mama, and Mama showed her how to pick the correct herbs, and they made some tea and salve, I believe it was called, for JoJo and Tony. And then we found out who won the contest, which was an amazing thing for all the kids at Riverside, right? So remember, if you have any questions or comments about the book that you feel so eager to share with me, please, please, please don't hesitate to email me or video chat me or whatever it is that you feel like you need to do. Get yourselves ready, get comfortable so we can read Stella by Starlight. Yay! All right, so we are on chapter 42. It's called Two Small Puncture Wounds. What's something that you think could cause two small puncture wounds? Hmm. All right, well, here we go. The rain had stopped by the time school let out, but the road was a muddy mess. The bigger boys tossed wet dirt balls at each other, while the younger ones made mud snakes and threw them at the girls. Stella dodged a slithering hunk of sludge. Quit, Jojo, she cried. You throw one more thing at me and I swear I'll tell Mama. She had taken off her shoes and was walking carefully along the side of the road. I was sort of hoping you could have won the contest, Jojo said, falling into step with her. I've been wanting a red-eye marble I seen at the general store. Stella gazed down at her muddy toes. My paper wasn't even sent in, Jojo, she reminded him. Miss Watson only submitted the best ones. Didn't you tell me you wrote about the clan? Jojo smoothed a huge dirt ball into his mucky palms. Uh-huh. You think maybe she didn't send your essay in because it was too... To, I don't know, uh, dangerous, he asked. Stella stopped short and looked at her brother. Gosh, I never even thought about that. You're pretty smart for a kid, you know. I know, Jojo said. Jojo made as if to fling the mud ball at his sister, but aimed for the third graders in front of him instead. Stella looked up at the dark clouds still scudding across the sky. More rain tonight, she commented. Good, more mud, Jojo replied. Dusty came tearing down the road to meet them. His sleek black fur mud spattered. When he stopped, he shook his whole body from head to tail. Stella and Jojo jumped out of the way just in time to avoid a muck shower. Hey, boy, Stella cried happily. You come to meet us? The dog barked as if he understood, then ran ahead of them, urgency in his yelping and the rapid wagging of his tail and the way he kept looking back to make sure they were following him. Dusty's acting peculiar, Jojo said, glancing over at my sister, glancing over at his sister. <laughs> at that, Dusty barked again and broke into a trot. Stella and Jojo jogged behind him. Once home, Stella leaped onto the front porch and flung open the door. Mama! Papa! No answer. The house was empty. This morning, Papa said he was taking the mule and going apple picking, Jojo remember. Yeah, me and Mama are going to start canning this weekend, Stella said. But where is Mama, Jojo asked. The dog barking more insistent now ran past the children around to the back of the house. Come on, Jojo, Stella said, dropping her shoes and following the dog. Something's not right. Hmm. I hope your brains are thinking right now, what could be happening? Because I know right now I'm thinking, why is Dusty acting so weird? And where is Mama? Any predictions? All right, let's keep going. They chased after Dusty through the backyard, through the woods, and toward Kilkenny Pond. Balls, cypress nodules, and cattails hugged the water. Rocks and small sticks cut into Stella's feet as they ran. Jojo spotted her before Stella did. Mama, he shrieked. Their mother lay curled on the rain-soaked ground, not far from the jumble of dead willow barks, a mess of vomit beside her. Several dark brown honey mushrooms spilled from her herb-collecting basket. As Stella approached, something moved in the undergrowth, earth-colored. Was that a snake? Stella felt an eerie calm come over her. 
She rushed to her mother and squatted beside her. She saw what had happened immediately. There were two small puncture wounds on her mother's left ankle. They bled just a little. Stella turned to Jojo, who had started to cry. Slowly, carefully, she told him. Go get Dr. Hawkins and tell him Mama's got a snake bite. It's bad. Then go find Papa. Fast. You know where the apple orchard is? Run. Wiping his nose on his sleeve, Jojo dashed off. Stella turned back to her mother, who was blinking slowly. Her breathing was uneven, raspy. I'm here, Mama, Stella said softly. I'm going to take care of you, you hear? Her mother's head moved Excuse me. Her mother's head moved imperceptibly. Then she licked her lips and murmured, Rattler, Copperhead, not for sure. Stella looked back to the house. There was no way she would be able to carry her mother that far. She leaned close to her mother's ear and whispered, I'll be right back, Mama. Don't worry. With that, she darted back to the house. She grabbed a couple of old towels, her father her father's Sunday necktie, and a half-full bottle of whiskey that she knew her father kept hidden under his bed. A faded dress she'd outgrown, two blankets, and a pillow. Then she filled a bucket full of clean water, pumping that handle up and down so hard it was a wonder it didn't snap in half. It took longer to get back because the load was clumsy, the bucket was heavy, and she didn't want to spill. Her mother was lying just as Stella had left her, but she was trembling now. Her ankle was beginning to swell. Mama, I told you I'd be right back. I'm here now. Stella crooned as she lifted her mother's head and placed the pillow under it. Did you know it's almost Thanksgiving, Mama? You were lucky to find mushrooms today. But you know all the secret places where the best stuff hides, don't you? You forgot what you told me about where snakes hide, I bet. I know I'm babbling, Mama, but I'm just trying to keep you awake till the doctor gets here, you hear? Stella... First poured the cold water on the wound, watching the oozing blood turn pale pink. Mama's eyes opened wide, registering shock, but Stella just kept rinsing the holes in her mother's legs. The next thing I'm going to pour might hurt a little more, she whispered, but I got to clean it as best I can. Stella had no idea if she was doing the right thing or not. She was pulling from a gut instinct she didn't know she had. She opened the bottle of whiskey, and as she she slothed most of it onto her mother's ankle. Her mother cried out in pain. Stella simply said, shh, shh, shh. It's going to be all right. Mama just stilled. Stella held a pale blue dress up to her face. Mama had made it for her when she was six. The cotton had been worn soft from dozens of wearings and washings. Without a second thought, Stella ripped into, ripped it into wide strips, which she wrapped loosely around and around her mother's leg. She secured the bandage with her father's necktie, then bundled her mother in the blankets. Stella soaked a piece of the torn dress with the last of the water and placed it gently on her mother's forehead. There was nothing else she could do, so she snuggled under the blanket, wrapped her body close to her mother's, and held her tightly. It would be dark soon. Where was the doctor? Where was Papa? She began to pray. Chapter 43 is called White Patients Only. Oh, God, Georgia, her father exclaimed as he raced toward them at last. Georgia was not far behind, his face tight with worry. It was almost dusk. Stella scrambled to her feet. Papa, Mama's been bit. She's really bad. It's really bad. She looked around. Where's Dr. Hawkins? He ain't here, her father said, desperation in his voice. He had to go to Riley Medical Conference. He's not new, due back for three days. Even as he spoke, he lifted, he lifted his semi-conscious wife into his arms, blankets and all, and strode back toward the house. Stella grabbed a water bucket and hurried after him. Must have been a rattler, her father declared, moving faster than Stella had dreamed possible for someone carrying another full-grown person. Cane breaks like to hide under the wet wood in the fall. Mama wasn't positive, Stella told him, worry making her mouth dry. I didn't see it, but maybe it was a copperhead, she added hopefully. They're not so poisonous, right? Still, they're very, very dangerous, her father replied as he bounded onto the porch. Rather than try and carry her to the loft, he gently laid his wife on Stella's bed. 
Jojo ran to stoke the fire without being told. I didn't know what to do, Papa, Stella said, feeling her calm disappear and frenzy setting in. Girl, you done so good, her father said, as he checked Stella's makeshift bandage. I couldn't have fixed her up better myself. Stella hoped she'd done enough. Water, her mother whispered. Water. Jojo grabbed the bucket from Stella, ran to pump fresh water, and hustled it right back in. Stella carefully held a dipper full to her mother's parched lips again and again until Mama fell asleep. Jojo, Papa called out. Run tell Mrs. Bates and Mrs. Winston what happened. They'll know more than us <coughs> Excuse me. what to do about a snake bite. Once Jojo rushed off, Stella turned to her father. What are we going to do, Papa? I've been thinking on exactly that. Your mother needs anti-venom. Doc Hawkins is not going to get back in time. I don't want to risk taking the wagon to Riley. You got to keep a snake bite real still. The bumps and thumps could kill her, I believe. He stared at his work worn hands. I can build or fix anything with these hands, he said, his voice breaking. But I can't fix this. Lord, I hate to say this, but we need Dr. Packer. Oh, Papa, there's no way he will come, is there? Well, I doubt he would even answer the door if I knocked, her father said. But you? He might just possibly listen to you. He's got a daughter about your age, don't he? Stella bit her lip hard. Yes, but he might be the head of the Ku Klux Klan. Why would he help us? Papa, Papa dug his fingers deep into his hair. He's got a wife he cares about. He's got a child he surely loves. He's got to know what it feels like to be crazy with worry for them. He placed his hands on Stella's shoulders. Will you go, child? Will you try? Your mama's got to be 20. Your mama's got maybe 20, 24 hours. Stella had never seen such a desperation in her father's face. Papa, I'll go. Don't worry. I'll go get Dr. Packard to come here and tend to mama. She headed up the road. That mile and a half to town never seemed far away. She didn't run. Nobody would listen to a sweaty girl, she figured. The town square, almost deserted this late, looked very different at night. Buildings cast long shadows and familiar shops looked foreign. She gazed up at the moon, which hung like a fingernail in the night sky. Light against dark. A sliver. A sliver of hope. She did pick up speed as she passed the bench near the general store even if no one was on it. Dr. Packer's office, just around the corner, stood between the undertaker's office and the bank. Stella smacked her forehead. What if he's gone for the day? She hadn't considered that most shops close up around four o'clock. She wondered if she dared go to his house, but then she saw with relief a light in the front window. An older white woman Stella didn't recognize, walking heavily on a cane, was just leaving the building. Thank you, doctor, she was saying. I'm feeling much better today. Stella hurried to the door before it could close. Good evening, ma'am, she said to the woman as she passed her. <laughs> was all Stella heard in reply as the woman hobbled off. Stella looked down and tried to smooth her wrinkled dress, suddenly regretting that she had not taken the time to change her clothes. She smelled of leaves and dirt. She sniffed. And whiskey. She had no choice. Just as Dr. Packard was closing the door, Stella pressed her hand up against it. Uh, excuse me, sir, she began. What you want, gal, the doctor said. <coughs> Stella hesitated. The doctor's eyes were such an odd color green, cold like fish scales. He was the only person she'd ever encountered with eyes just that color. She remembered those eyes peering from behind that hood on the day of the Spencer fire. She remembered those eyes that afternoon so long ago when she'd been only five. Stella blinked fast and shook her head. Then she blurted out, My mother has been bitten by a rattlesnake, copperhead. We think so. Please, sir, she needs a doctor. She needs anti-venom, and she needs it fast. Y'all got a colored doctor down there. Don't be bringing all that botheration to me. Dr. Hawkins is in Riley, sir. So go to Riley. Shella bit her lip to quell her rising panic. Mama can't be moved, sir. Papa says it would make the venom travel faster in her bloodstream. Oh, so now your pappy's a doctor. You don't need me, he laughed. Oh, yes, we surely do. I have a daddy and a little brother who love her very much. She's my mother, sir, he shrugged. She ain't my mama. 
so I don't rightly care. Sella thought quickly, then dared. I know your daughter, sir. We're the same age. Pauletta don't know nobody the likes of you, he sneered. But what if, what if it was Pauletta or your wife that got the snake bite? Stella asked, trying to reason with him. He leaned in toward her. They got better sense than to get bit by a snake. Only stupid people let snakes bite them. Please, sir, please. Her leg is swelling. It's hard for her to breathe. She's barely conscious. Won't you be kind enough to come take a look at her, please? Stella implored. No. Now leave my property before I call the sheriff. Stella was stunned. But she might die, she pleaded, blinking back tears. I told you, I don't care. Please, Stella whispered once more. Read my sign, Dr. Packard said. Then he slammed the door in Stella's face. Tacked on the door was a wooden plaque, neatly painted in red block letters. It said, whites only. And we'll stop there for today. Chapter 44 is called, She Cried. All right.